Hello everyone, here I am with the next chapter. So in chapter 28, the PDF went round during the pause, um, putting posters up and advertising in place for something called Fairground Friday. So that when everybody else from Starkly came out of the pause, they were all talking about it and hopefully um, they'd be all in one place come Friday. Um, at the end of the chapter, Dexter, the very quiet boy who just sort of has just been sat back watching things, said that he thought he had something quite important to say. So here we are, chapter 29, well done Dexter. You saw their lair, Dexter, said Hamish, shocked. You've been. Dexter was breathing into a paper bag to stop him hyperventilating. Yes, he said quietly, between great gulps of air. Show us where it is, said Alice, on this map. Dexter pointed the finger of one shaking hand to a part of the woods somewhere north of the Grey Bridge. Over the bridge, said Hamish, but no one goes there. Scared, said Alice. Well, yes, admitted Hamish. Aren't you? I told you, she said. I'm scared of nothing. You seemed a bit scared up that, ro up that roller coaster, said Venk. Shut up, Venk, said Alice, or I'll tell everyone you want to be in a boy band. There's an old stone cottage, continued Dexter, doing his best not, not to stutter with fear. Down by the cliffs. The cliffs? It was dangerous down by the cliffs. The cliffs were all that separated starkly from the sea. It's almost green with moss, said Dexter. But the leaves in the trees around it are all black like tar, like they've been poisoned. How did you find it? asked Alice. We were going for a walk two weeks ago, said Dexter, shivering at the memory. Me and my parents and my older sister. Dad said it seemed to be getting darker and then there was this flash and suddenly my whole family just stopped walking. Except you. Except me, said Dexter. And then I heard them approaching. It sounded like drums or thunder, but I didn't know what to do. So I hid behind a bush. Hamish put his hand on Dexter's shoulder. It was trembling. They came from everywhere, left, right, up, down. They scooped up my family and after a minute or so, I got up and followed all the broken branches and bushes to the creepy old cottage. So they live in a cottage, said Buster, wrinkling his nose. What, like a grandma? Full of doilies and knitting. They live under the cottage, said Dexter, his face almost grey at the memory. You open up the front door and there's nothing but stairs going down. You can see the first one or two, but then it's just darkness, blacker than you can imagine. Did you go down? asked Alice, moving closer. Did you walk down the stairs? Dexter looked ashamed. I managed the first step, but I knew what was down there. I'd seen them, and what's worse... I'd seen who was in charge. The world stoppers, said Hamish. The big ones with the moustaches. Bigger even than them, said Dexter. Taller than a bus. Taller than two buses, maybe. He had the biggest hands in the world. They were like claws and his legs were like trees. I can still hear the sound of him walking, Hamish. This stomp, stomp, stomp. The kids all jumped slightly. I think I saw the world stop a general, he said, eyes wide and fearful. Alice gulped. There was something even worse than a world stopper. There was a world stopper general. Hamish knew what this meant. The boss was in town to make sure the job got done. That was not good news. But at least now they knew who must be in charge of the pauses. I couldn't go any further, said Dexter, still quite shaken. I was too scared. He hung his head in shame. Hamish patted Dexter on the back and then looked at Alice. Underneath the cottage is where we'll find our families, he said. 
now there was just the small matter of the world stoppers themselves. <laughs>